data collection has become so tedious that it has absolutely no value. People are forgetting about care. No, the only thing data does is enhance our measurability and make us understand the process better. So this is the actual reason we are collecting data and without losing the focus and without losing the care, how can we make data collection and processing easy? That is what we aim to deal with. That being said, for um, some of you who are not very aware, we have also an allied association named the IAHDA or the International Association for Healthcare Data Analytics. I hope I'm audible and visible to everybody. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. So we are uh, at IHDA. we are actually just trying to make people recognize that statistics in healthcare is the most, um, it's the basic foundation these days and that whatever we are doing, we should be able to account for it and be able to measure the elements so that we can understand the process better and then improve it where the loops are. So International Association for Healthcare Data Analytics was proposed basically for this. And we are proud to say that we're the first organization dedicated to healthcare data analytics. I'll just go quickly so that I don't waste much of your time. Our aim over here is to basically go hand in hand with RISI and advance professional competency, promote evidence-based methodology, understand statistical applications and enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of the clinical research, quality improvement and patient safety programs. So I believe most of you will be familiar with this in your work backgrounds. Also, you might be thinking, why am I talking about this in such a webinar? It is because as CPHQ professionals, you are the pillars of making people understand what data in healthcare is all about. So we would love to have you on board with or without your CPSQ degrees and sorry certificates. And we would love to have you contribute to the organization. Our vision is to now become the pioneer international body and probably even a statutory body in the future, which promotes the education of healthcare statistical techniques to generate monumental transformation in healthcare quality, research, and patient safety parameters. Our mission is to define the standard of excellence in healthcare statistics. And like I said, maybe in the future, we can look at becoming a statutory body for healthcare statistics. What are you going to get from being a healthcare, sorry, an IHCA member? As you know, we are the first organization, so you can see the scope for contribution and the scope for growth. It is enormous and tremendous. So being part of us will probably give you a way to also ex uh, explore and exhibit your talents in this domain. We have planned weekly webinars at different levels. For those of you who have already been with us, you know, definitely do webinars at very regular intervals on various statistical topics, including CPHQ and CPPS topics. But these weekly webinars are now we're planning at different levels so that everybody can understand basics as well as expert levels. So we can have a transition or we can have different, all people coming to understand what data analytics is all about. News and updates from the data analytics world is going to be there. And in our group, we're going to share it with you whenever we get the updates. Advice on data and its components. So if you have data and, and various uh, levels, it's not segregated or it's not organized, it's not, an, uh, not yet analyzed, we're there to help you with that at every step. You can get help with research also. We're planning a newsletter and very soon a journal also from our side to help you publish your findings or put forth your ideas and develop the organization. So these are what you will get from being with us. So if there is anything else, please do contact me or go to ihda.org and check out more for membership plans and all that. Or you can contact me personally. This is my number. Whenever you want any idea about what it's all about.
so now without much further ado i am going to go back to the topic which is cphq tips and tricks so welcome once again to all the cphq aspirants and all the very best as a former student of dr ten aristo and a person who finished my cphq certification um certification i missed a lot of turbulence in my life i must say that if you are with resi you have achieved almost 80% of your goal 20% of effort from your side is what you will have to put in with your whole heart to clear the way and get your certification all the very best and now i hand it over to dr tenar sir to introduce the speakers yeah good evening all okay so today we'll see some important uh, tips how to prepare for this exam what are the important things we need to focus so we have different uh, experts dr anshu ma'am and dr femita and dr jessica so recently they got uh, cp certificate from nhq so we will we'll learn together so how they got the certificate what are the things they did for the completion of the certificate uh, yes uh, dr jessica ma'am over to you please uh, good evening everyone thank you sir thank you very much for this opportunity all right uh, it's a great great pleasure to be here on this platform and uh, sharing my experience how i have achieved this prestigious honor of cphq definitely my partner uh, in this journey is sir my family and fellow aspirants we were learning from each other quite a lot we were learning so let's start i'll give a short overview uh, i'll share my screen so uh, cphq is we are all here we are all like minded right we are here with uh, for the same common goal right some of us we have achieved cphq with the help of rishi and especially with sir's guidance and support uh, so here uh, we are embracing the challenge and the challenge is we are running towards fire isn't it uh, if we are running towards fire hence we are demonstrating crucial value that is very indispensable uh, in terms of healthcare because to do this we need to have a burning desire to do something right and to make make lives better to help people and make an impact so um the topics which i'm going to cover here uh, introduction benefits of cphq some tips tools for planning how do we plan how do we achieve Uh, cphq as uh, dr rohita rightly said you know 80 person you will get all the support and all the guidance from sir 20 percent is your effort you don't need any extra material any extra books the material is sufficient the guidance is sufficient and 20 percent of your efforts is uh, is is important so <clears throat> let's start so uh, all of us we know what is nhq it's the only organization uh, which is dedicated to healthcare quality professional and it defines the standards of excellence for all the healthcare professionals uh, they equip them and uh, the organization is uh, meeting the standards of all healthcare standards and uh, the continuity of care and cphq nhq is the one who is giving this certification so it's the accreditation certification healthcare quality and it's both academic and professional achievement you learn and you grow in your profession as well and uh, rishi when you're here on this platform and you get this training of cphq you can assess the current healthcare activities wherever you're working i'm sure you're working in healthcare settings so you assess those uh, your activities and operations in your organization and then you uh, focus like what we are learning and then you have the new ideas when you you are getting trained and you definitely have a desire to improve the process what's going on 
So CPHQ is giving you this recognition in healthcare. What are the benefits? Benefits we all know. We with uh, when you learn about this uh, uh, whole uh, training, what you learn from all, all this training is to identify you identify the root causes. What the, there are problems, right? And so identify the root causes of the problem, and <clears throat> especially you identify the potential opportunities and key performance, which is measuring effectiveness of healthcare system. Then you to try to, when you identify, you try to reduce errors. And now in healthcare, errors, what are errors? Errors is just a difference between life and death, isn't it? When it's healthcare, it's a difference between only life and death. So when you are trained with proper skills, you have the skills and you're, you get the knowledge, you'll be able to reduce errors in diagnosis, treatment, and other healthcare processes for sure. Organization leadership. Teams can effectively work with a good leadership. Leadership is one of the topic which we are going, uh, which you are going to cover in uh, CPHQ training. So, with the proper uh, effective leadership, you will add value to your organization. You will add; it will add value to your profile as well. So, <clears throat> the fourth point is the continuous improvement. Of course, you know uh, <clears throat> with the training, uh, with attending webinars. And you are continuously improving. So with CPHQ, so even with the recertification, you keep yourself updated after attending the webinars and you're continuously improving. And it gives you higher recognition. As we said, it's slightly tricky to clear this uh, uh, CPHQ, but with the right training, you'll pass with easily, you will pass. Now you will have. Uh, now after the training, you will have the skills. You will have the knowledge. Definitely, it will lead you to the success. Now, uh, of course, better salaries. Companies they like to invest in you when you have CPHQ. You have this uh, badge. Uh, that means uh, you're recognized with your uh, skills. Companies invest in you, right? And you will be able to enhance your professional network as well. So these are the benefits of uh, getting CPHQ, right? Now, the, the brief uh, basic thing, we know what is NAHQ, what is CPHQ, you know what uh, benefits you'll get, you'll get. But how to achieve this uh, certification? Uh, uh, we'll just uh, have an overview of all the tips that uh, I have encountered while uh, through my journey of achieving the CPHQ. The first and foremost thing, of course, you all know is planning. You have to plan. You have to develop a plan for practice. Now you know you're going to write exam in next three months. You need to plan it. You don't have to memorize all these books and practice tests. The, the vital thing that is uh, there in whole in whole process is a logical approach with practical thinking, which Rishi is going to provide you with, with practical thinking. Sir has excellent examples and you with which easily you can understand all the statistical models, all the statistical tools. So uh, you need to have a logical approach while you understand and you have to implement it. Then you make your flashcards. So you design your, when you are, uh, when you finish with your chapter, like uh, for example, you have uh, one day on Friday, you have a class. So uh, after the class, after the class, you make your own flashcard, the key points, you mark it on that and with those flashcards, you'll uh, at the end when you revise, you'll have those things which you can quickly go through, uh, which will help you in achieving the uh, uh, successful CPHQ. Now, so you have to revise as well, right? You don't have to memorize, but you have to do repeated revisions uh, while going through this practice material. Mark the portion that you need revision because it will help you at the end of the preparation. Like, like I said, you have to repeat. Master each section of the exam to maximize your chance of clearing the exam. Uh, with some Sometimes, you know, uh, some, some of the topics like statistical topics are there, which you tend to forget. But if you repeat and not memorize, but repeat, definitely you'll understand more, more each time. Then uh, you have to identify your weak topics. When uh, at the end of the training, you identify where 
your your weaknesses are and you devote more time on those things and master them it's not difficult at all just with repeated uh, revisions as well as with the uh, you know support from sir definitely you will you will uh, try to clear your mind which with which you have doubts now you have to keep a deadline for your preparation now if the exam is for uh, after 3 months you have to make a deadline like within this 2 uh, and a half months or 2 months i'm going to finish and uh, you prepare accordingly so prepare for almost 3 months before the test since you uh, if you do this earlier you may tend to forget what you have learned so that is very important because you need to keep your time uh, for revision as well so that's very important now whenever like you are writing the exam you have to manage with the time so while prior the exam if you plan it well and you make your deadline own deadlines you will be able to manage with the time while during the exam as well because uh, it will take longer than one minute to deal with the question if it takes more longer then you have to move on further you have to move on to the next question and then revisit the miss, missed questions that's that's very important to be able to cover the whole uh, 125 questions one it's more but more than uh, 125 it's 150 and then uh, <clears throat> elimination elimination in case you are in uh, unsure of the answer then you have to work by elimination you eliminate all the uh, answers which you think that they are obviously not the right choice and that then you will get on to the to select the best answer so as i mentioned earlier that you have to revisit the missed question because uh, that you have to manage with the time you cannot take more than one minute uh, to deal with one question so move on further see the, these are the uh, tips which you have to keep in mind uh, while planning as well as uh, during the examination uh, moving on to the next slide there is a very uh, smart tool for the planning objective that is that is called smart so you have to be specific you have to measure and you when you are planning you you have to see whether your uh, goal and whether your plan is achievable it should be realistic you know it should not be like okay i will do it quickly no you have to plan it well and you have to make it realistic and trackable you have to track right so all together uh, i'm sorry i mentioned 150 question there were 140 question to complete in 3 hours and uh, 125 questions Uh, are used for calculating your score and other 15 or pre-test questions, and the later they are, the the questions that do not contribute to your score but are evaluated, being evaluated for possible inclusion exam for the, in the future. So, uh, so the tool that we get here is planning pl uh, planning tool is smart tool. So execute the plan with precision to pass the exam. So what is important here is planning. you have to plan and you have to make it uh, realistic you have to make a realistic plan so the topics uh, as we all know these are the uh, topics four topics organizational leadership uh, hda health data analytics the topic is the performance and perf uh, process improvement and uh, finally the patient safety so there is a weightage where you have to focus uh, where you have to emphasize more which topics are more important uh, so you have to uh, keep this in mind uh, the topics so the crucial element while going through the topics by the end of the training you know some topics may not be very clear to you while you are attempting all the questions side by side so uh, at the end what is important is uh, we are all aware of the pareto principle here yes 80 20 rule so focus on the major component of the exam because if you focus on the major component uh, it will give you the highest possible return for your investment in study time and other resources that is real relatively modest investment of time and effort so focus your energy on the most crucial elements of cphq uh, i'm not saying like you know uh, you have to just focus on that but yes at the end you have to focus what is more important <clears throat> and uh, risi is providing you all the emanation all the tools all the resources uh, references for you to study uh, you you are on the right platform 
and sir is giving you a simple and practical example to explain the difficult scenarios. Uh, if you are new to data analytics, sometimes it's challenging to understand, but with uh, sir's guidance, when he is teaching you, you have to listen carefully, each and every word to understand. Uh, to be honest with you, I never, I, I was, I, I have never missed sir uh, class in three to four to five months training. I have never missed hundred percent attendance. And that is one of the component uh, of uh, being successful, achieving this uh, prestigious certificate. So there are uh, uh, abstract concepts that one could relate to every one's everyday life because we're working in healthcare. So whenever you get one topic, uh, you have to relate it with your everyday work life and it will not take long time to for you to understand you will understand if you implement it in a practical logical way and there's no need to buy materials from outside no need i i am telling you 100 percent sure you don't have to buy any material from outside whatever uh, you get an excess uh, uh, to the resources to the questions to the material to the ppts uh, please focus on that. Repeat them, and <clears throat> it will really help you. And you have to dedicate. You have to dedicate uh, your time during the weekdays, even though we know we all are working. But still, some of the time you have to spend uh, every day to revise and to uh, to you know track down what you have studied in the last weekend. Because trainings are on weekends, but you get weekdays to revise all those topics which uh, Sir has covered. So there's a simple formula how to get there. There are three things that if you focus on those three things, getting organized, disciplined and determined. You have to organize, you have to plan it well and be disciplined. You have to follow that plan and be determined to your strategy. You have made your strategy and you get organized and disciplined and determined Definitely, definitely, it will lead you to success. Proper strategy and meticulous execution. You don't, even if, you know, uh, some days you might miss, but you don't have to give up. You have to be resilient and catch up uh, for the next hour or next day. So it's all your passion. You have. We are on this platform because of the passion for quality and love for science. And definitely, you will get affinity for that data. Because when you learn, you get involved, you get this uh, desire, you get this uh, push. And without data, we know uh, everywhere is data. And it, it helps us to understand the process, improve. So that is a crucial and that is the imperative today for all the healthcare uh, settings. So my summary is just imagine today, if you are here, imagine yourself as CPHQ. If you imagine yourself as a CPHQ, you will definitely work towards that. And believe me, there's nothing sweeter than the taste of success. So all the best to everyone towards your journey. You will enjoy this journey when you are involved, your 100% attendance and your dedication with the right plan, with the right strategy. I assure you, you, you will achieve this very soon. So all the best to everyone. And thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, and thank you, Rishi, for all Dr. Rohita, who's organizing, who's uh, doing so much for us, uh, clearing all our, uh, you know, problems. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, doctor, so much. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jessica, ma'am. Yes. So, my pleasure. so there is clear uh, summary about uh, CPHQ preparations. So a lot of important points. Even personally, I learned many things from your presentations. So thanks a lot, ma'am. Any any questions? From thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Gopika, ma'am, others, please. No, it was very clear and uh, kind of motivational uh, slides, yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. If you want to clarify anything, please, you can discuss now. Okay. <clears throat> 
So our next uh, professional expert in quality, Dr. Anshu Ma'am. So we'll see some new lesson from her presentation. Yes, uh, Dr. Anshu Ma'am, please go ahead. Over to you, please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, all. Uh, Good evening. First of all, I would like to thank sir for this uh, great opportunity. Thank you, sir, for uh, all your uh, motivation. Uh, I am today a CPHQ and I feel proud to be that. Um, it's all because of you. And thank you for giving me this thank opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Jessica has, uh, she's been my fellow. Uh, we were together in the class and uh, she's given a very beautiful presentation on NHQ and CPHQ. I think she's covered almost everything that uh, I think most of uh, the participants are the aspirants for the CPHQ. So she is very clearly uh, told about how the exam is. And uh, in fact, she's very beautifully explained how to appear for the exam uh, when you're actually going for the exam, how many questions will come and all those things. I would just very briefly tell about my experience uh, in uh, CPHQ. So I'll just uh, share my screen. So uh, definitely the topic of today's webinar is tips and tricks to uh, attain CPHQ. So I, when I started this journey, this uh, certificate, this logo uh, was a big dream for me. And coming from India, I always had this fear because uh, my journey for this CPHQ, I would, uh, this is my recommendation to everybody that it's just not for any job or money. It be, I always thought uh, that it's a credential because I will be among those 14,000 clan of CPHQ across the world, which I would be one of those. So please, we all get motivated and assume and think that definitely with RISI, you will be among those 14,000 plus people across the world that will be uh, CPHQ certified with the help of RISI. So definitely, uh, as uh, Dr. Jessica has already told about the four modules which are there in this uh, certification, uh, healthcare data analytics, organizational leadership, patient safety, performance and process improvement. Uh, the coverage and how much percentage each module carries has already been discussed. So I would not discuss much about it. But definitely one thing I would like to uh, say uh, from my personal experience, statistics and data analytics is uh, very new for all of us in quality because we speak about quality, we speak about data, but uh, I believe most of us don't know how to apply the data analytics where we need to, which tools to apply, how to calculate, which Tenar uh, uh, sir explains it beautifully. I mean, the first two months of the journey of uh, CPHQ goes in understanding data and statistics, which is the beautiful part, not only to gain this certificate, but also as a quality healthcare professional to learn how to get actually, you know, how valuable the data is and how you can transform the data into valuable information, which I learned a lot in this journey of CPHQ training from RISI. So uh, I would uh, request everybody to please uh, get into this. And if we learn this, definitely our uh, half of the problems is sorted uh, for data analytics questions because they are very practical and uh, they are uh, very practical to do, which so tells with very beautiful examples. So please don't miss out on the healthcare data analytics module. Definitely, as uh, we all need success and we are here for success and we will get success if you are enrolled with RISI because uh, definitely uh, SIR has that uh, things to get it done to achieve this certificate. For me, uh, I would suggest these four key things uh, I learned through this journey for achieving CPHQ was time management. Because I feel we are all working professionals. We are juggling with our professional lives, our family lives. 
but yes if you we are getting enrolled the time management is very important we have to dedicate apart from our weekend classes at least minimum of one hour in initial days and then as the time comes close we have to give a dedicated timeline to achieve this secondly uh, as dr jessica also mentioned adherence to class i feel is very very important out of everything if we adhere to the classes i think 80 90% of the problems are solved because there is one to one discussion with among all the members of the classes and if you don't miss a class uh, you are definitely achieving this and i didn't miss even a single class and which i feel is the biggest mantra for me to achieve cbhq regular studies so uh, because if we will not forget uh, one once we go from one module to second module second module to third module we may forget about statistics when we are into a leadership module so regular uh, keeping up with the chapters and the material helps us to get the certificate and practice test and mock test uh, which are beautiful design by sir and the team rishi is that after every uh, session and even after every module uh, we have to give mock tests and then just before the exam we have to give more than 13 14 mock tests which includes questions from all the modules which is definitely uh, the key to success because if you do the practice test and the dashboards and the score cards you get to know which are your weakest areas where we need to focus which module we need to focus which is going to help us to achieve this certificate in prestigious certificate so uh, for me the two mantras for success was classes which i didn't miss and the mock test after each and every module and the practice test uh, modules which were there before the exam benefits as i said uh, dr jessica has already explained about the exam what is cphq what is uh, nhq uh, how to prepare for the exam so i will just quickly look into the benefits for me as i uh, said uh, being in india certified professional healthcare quality certification is not mandatory not at all uh, but yes i believe not for salary but for international recognition because i will be among those 14000 individuals in the world which will be give me a recognition which was a reason for me to enroll for this secondly advancement in career because we learn a lot of new practices in quality and healthcare practices which we can implement and actually give back to the society and give back to the public give back to the community which we learn during this journey of learning cphq and especially sir gives us a lot of practical uh knowledge practical uh, scenarios where we learn and then we can actually implement in our day to day work operations where we are working and we can learn how beautifully we can come up with some plans and some ideas by applying the data to improve and to design some processes which help us not only in our organization but, but in community and i actually did it during my journey and which helped me really a lot i would like to thank uh, sir again for that thirdly as i said patient safety we've already talked about near miss so near miss is equal to death in healthcare and patient safety is at most for now and need of our in healthcare in current scenario so with this you learn a lot of updated and advanced uh, knowledge about improving patient safety when you are going through this journey of cphq certification course and then lastly i would say uh, international quality practices and processes because with our fellows who joined from across the world when i mean during my class i had lot of fellows from gulf from saudi from india from across the world population which helped me to learn a lot of practices and processes which i could learn from my fellows and implement it and be updated that what's going around in the world we are we can't just in this scenario the need of our is we can't live in a small niche saying that i just need nabh or jci being into quality 
we need to know what's the need of our what's going on around the world and what we can do and learn and implement to serve our organization as well as community so that was uh, i think it's a very benefit uh, thing from cphq that i learned and lastly boosting my credibility again i would say that uh, money uh, salary increment will all come it will definitely come if you are focused if you are recognized people will come that's what i believe in if you are recognized and if your credentials are strong people will come to you and uh, that's what was my man- reason for me to go for cphq so all of you get boosted up for this uh, journey towards cphq definitely it will be a very beautiful journey with the sea of learning be consistent with your uh, classes be consistent with your practice and definitely you will get this uh, see for cphq uh, certificate that's all from my side once again uh, thank you so much sir for giving me this opportunity it was a very crisp and uh, uh, slide uh, do not just to just to understand the people that and boost people all the best to all the, uh, aspirants going for cphq thank you thank you thank you ma'am yes so the recommendation from dr anshu ma'am is very clear so we need to focus on our time management excellent mantras what are the mantras we need to focus to clear this exam time management 100% attendance so focusing on our process not focusing on the outcome so for the next month what are the things we are going to do for this exam so if you want to do something in your life so this is this is an opportunity i'm sure definitely with the help of cph we can do many things not only for our personal life even for our community even for our colleagues for our organization so don't focus on only certificate correct so this is the recommendation from dr anshuma uh, thank you ma'am thanks a lot for your presentations uh thank you so much sir once again uh, for this opportunity and for making uh, me a cbhq certified individual thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you so our final professional dr patima sorry femita ma'am so we'll see what are things we need to focus as per her recommendations yes uh, dr femitharma uh, over to you please yes sir uh, good evening my friends uh, first of all i you know would like to thank uh, sir for giving me this opportunity and it's my you know pleasure to be a part of today's topic and uh, in fact i would like to thank mr uh, arun uh, sir who has you know, recommended me rishi after rishi uh, the uh, uh, you know today i am holding cph2 certification it is because of rishi so i am thanking arun sir as well for recommending me rishi so it has changed so many things in my life and uh, uh, i special thanks for tenors sir because he is the mentor who understands every every candidate whoever is appearing for the exam what is their cadre what is their strength what is the weakness so he d- does analysis for every candidate and recommends and gives lot of suggestions where exactly they should ca- concentrate for me uh, yeah like uh, no like uh, the entire travel the entire journey of uh, preparation and even you know giving up giving the exams so he has done a good prediction about me what exactly where is my strength what is my weakness and wherever he finds my weakness he used to tell me how to improve the gap so which is very much required for every candidate so he gives special attention special focus individual focus for all the candidates so i congratulate everybody so for choosing rishi so you are we are in good hands so he is the expert who make who will make us to clear cphq and uh, we will all be a cph cph professional thank you so much sir 
So, uh, with the permission of sir, I would like to take this uh, uh, presentation a kind of informal. Sir, if you give me permission. Yeah, please, please, ma'am, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, because, you know, like Dr. Jessica and Dr. Anshu, they have given a very, very good and nice formal presentation about the weightage, what is CPHQ, what is NAHQ, what is the academic, uh, you know, like uh, uh, the categories we have, everything they have given a very clear picture. So I would like to talk something, you know, which is uh, I, basically it is my experience. So if you see, again, this slide says about the format of the CPHQ exams, how much questions it will have, what is the timing and what will be uh, no pretest and uh, no, how many questions will be evaluated, all this and uh, how much, you know, how many broad uh, categories it has like statistics, process improvement and patient safety, leaderships, everything. All this you will be knowing and it has already been explained by Dr. Jessica and Dr. Anshu. So I will talk about the tips, like how it is my experience, how I have prepared for the exam. So it is not just before the exam we practice, it is the entire journey as we register to CPHQ or as we register uh, in RISI, the day one starts. So that will be the day till we give the exam, the preparation should go on, should go on, should go on. So to begin with the classes. Yes, as my friends rightly said, uh, the classes, attending the classes is very, very, very important. And uh, Dr. Tenner is, sir, has a style of, you know, the teaching. His methodology is like, uh, it is not, he doesn't speak only whatever is there in the slides. He says a lot of information during the class. So taking the notes in the class is very, very, very important. If the slide is having four points, five points, he will talk about 50 points. So it is not just five points. So taking notes in the class is very, very important and keywords. So I learned what is keywords, how to highlight it only by self. So wherever we see even in the content, even in the questions, everywhere. Whenever we see the content, this keyword should pop up. So, Sarah has a habit of, you know, style of marking the keywords in the red color. So, believe me, do you, whenever I read the questions, whenever I read the contents, so by default, in my imagination, every keyword gets highlighted. So, that is, the incul that is how he has inculcated his qualities in me so it is my experience and my own tips i'm giving to you all my friends so please take notes and mark the keywords and after after completing every module there is an assessment and sir will go through every questions and there will be we will be given an opportunity to give the answers so uh, it is like i know like we all you know fellow friends and we should learn from each other for example, if we are giving the correct answer, it is not that we have done the task for the day. If our friends are making mistakes, so what is their rational? That also we should learn. It is not we will be having one rational and one logic to select option A, but our friend would have selected an you know, option B. Sometimes our answer will be correct. Sometimes their answers will be correct. So how the, the, the rational is very, very important. And uh, Sir specifies and his style is, you know, every time whenever he shares a question in the WhatsApp or in the practice questions, everywhere, rational is very important. So we should learn with each other. Next slide, sir. Now, uh, this is how, you know, like CPHQ, what are all the, you know, topics will be coming, you know, like uh, uh, statistics, process improvement, all that in one side. And what is the style and methodology of RISI? Yes, after each module, there is an assessment and we will be doing it. While doing it, the time management is very, very important. We should make a practice right from the beginning that we should not exceed more than a minute for the question. Probably if we may, if we spend more than uh, two minutes, three minutes, we may give the correct answer. But if it is correct or not, but try to stick to the time limit. So that is how the habit, you know, right from the day one, you know, we should have. Because if we spend more time, 
and give the correct answer it is like cheating ourselves what will happen then i know when we do the mock exam or in the real exam what will happen this time management will become a very big problem and that is where most of the people will fail it is not because of the knowledge it is not because of the lack of experience it is only because of the anxiety during the exam because of no proper time management my dear friends please make it as a habit from the day one the time management is very 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 important you please make it as a habit right from the assessment and the practice questions practice questions yes if we are finishing the first module it is not that you know after completing the entire you know category like statistics we will do the questions no every day there are you know lot of you know chance given by the methodology like we can attempt each uh set of questions more than 20 times 25 times like that so how many how many of us have utilized to the maximum not even me so uh sir has the you know, style of you know evaluating that as well how many people how many candidate has given attempted the practice questions how many times so he goes to that extent and see how many attempts we have given so even when we go for the process improvement after completing statistics we should such statistics every day because uh, if we spend most of the time in process improvement we will feel you know like yeah we start living in that module but what will happen when we go back to statistics and see it will become a greek and latin for us we might have practiced very well we might have scored good you know marks uh, when we were practicing one the statistics but what will happen when we move to the next module whatever we learned that will we will tend to forget so we should be constantly in touch with the all the topics because when we go to the leadership the final topic whatever we learned yes we have to touch statistics also we have to touch process improvement also so that is how we know like we should uh, we should practice uh, more that is the that is what i am trying to say and the model exams model exams will be having everything together like from the statistics pi ps leaderships everything i used to think you know like when i read the questions i have the habit of reading the questions multiple times first time when i read the questions i will find the one meaning when i read it for the next time the meaning will change but if it is a mistake when sir reads when sir reads he will give us some other you know meaning so every time we read the question the the logic the reasoning will keep changing so my friends so before giving before selecting the answers please read the questions once twice but same time you don't uh, no spend most of the time in that because we have to analyze also time management is very important that is why i am saying stick on to the time management right from the first day and the mock exams helped us very 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 much for example when sir used to say that my performance is very good what has happened is i my performance in assessment was uh, was i uh, know satisfactory even i mean it is good but when i did model exams mock exams what happened uh, all together you know i lost somewhere my performance you know started uh, my graph started going down then i understood what could be the reason uh, it is because uh, you know like uh, the when i uh, it is like i will lose uh, i will go blank so that is when you know we have to calm down and uh, read you know because whenever i read the questions tenor sir voice is only will come in my mind how he will read how he will divide the question into the meanings how he will underline the keywords then his style of reasoning i uh, inculcated in myself and that is how you know i was able to uh, Uh, succeed this exam my friends because i am telling you i am not an expert the entire journey i only followed whatever my sir said i didn't do any kind of research i didn't uh, you know uh, read any books or any i didn't browse anything whatever material given by rishi i have followed whatever my sir used to say i have obeyed so that is how you know like i have cleared is what i strongly believe so 
Yes, as my friends, you know, Dr. Jessica and Dr. Anshu said, attending the class is very, very important and constant preparation. Whatever you contribute, how much ever you are getting involved, you will get everything in back as a, certify, a certification in your hand. And whenever you give the answer, it can be, you know, by luck, by fluke also, the answer may be correct. But try to have a rational for every single answer, whether it is correct or not, the rational is very, very important. And logical reasoning. If we don't know the answer, try to log reasoning in out very logically. Because as I said, I am not an expert in quality. Logically, I used to think when I don't know the answer, I will accept that I don't know. I will not go back and, you know, like uh, think so much where I will be lost. I will start reasoning logically and I will make, I'll make bookmark so that I will not spend too many time, too much of time in the same questions which I don't know the answer. I will attend, I will skip that questions and I will move forward to attend other questions and after bookmarking, I will go back to the same question and spend time uh, thinking logically and don't regret if you don't know the answer. That's okay. Learn from the mistakes. Accept that we don't know and wait for the you know turn when it will be explained by the sir. So it is not that we should learn you know only from our mistake. Even we can learn from our colleague, our friend's mistakes as well. And after preparation, after practice, take a break. When we go out of this laptop, out of this you know subject, do something and come back, you will start seeing everything afresh. So taking a break is also very, very important. And uh, you, we have to, you know, uh, follow the Pareto rule again. Uh, I will give some other kind of, you know, uh, reason behind it. It's like we have, we have for example, uh, the content is 100 percentage, select 20 percentage and do 80 percentage of practice, repeated practice, practice, practice. We may be knowing we would have covered 80% of the content, but if we do only 20% of the practice, it is of no use. So if you ask me, we should select a limited, you know, content, limited modules and do practice, practice, more of practice, rather covering it, you know, like a spreadly, we have to go in depth and do practice so many times that will, that is how, you know, like I have done it. I think today I am holding CPHQ. Because of all this is what I am also believing. So I am sharing my experience with you all my friends. Thank you sir for giving me this opportunity. And uh, make a calendar. Make a calendar. How much you know like uh, you prepare a calendar like what is your target date. Within this date uh, how many you know modules you are going to cover. How many times you are going to do the practice questions. So that is how you should prepare a Gantt chart. So that will help you a lot. You will know where we are standing, where you are standing, how much we have, you know, practiced, how much more is spending. So that if we are unable to, you know, spend more time because of the, you know, office work or something, we will know how much, you know, we have to spend more time on some other days. And be as a very keen observer. Give detailing for every single word comes out of tenor society's mouth. Because... More time we spend, more we will learn. Every single word comes out of his mouth is very, 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 very precious. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, excellent uh, lesson. Um, especially the keywords. So, there is strong relationship between the keywords and the CPHQ questions. So if you, if you identify the keyword, for most of the questions, we can able to choose the correct response. So this is the thing we got from Dr. Pimita Ma'am. 100% attendance, preparing notes during session, supporting others, yes. Because first we need to build a culture. Uh, without culture, even if we, if, we, if we got the certificate, what is the purpose? If there is no sharing, if there is no supporting now, what is the purpose of the certification? So, we should learn from other, others' practice also. Even the rational, yes. Especially for our WhatsApp questions, we need to, we need to share the rational also for each and every correct answer. We cannot uh, send only A or B or C or D, no. We need to write something about why we choose to A. Because this is, this is an opportunity for learning. Even we can share our things to others, correct? 
But if you send just to only A or B or C, how can we learn from this? But if there is rational from each one, we can able to get many things. Th this is the power of culture and uh, teamwork. So thank you, Dr. Pemita, ma'am. Excellent presentations, excellent lesson, and congratulations for your uh, new job. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. I should mention, you know, one more thing that uh, when you spoke about the culture, positive culture, uh, yes. my friends like Dr. Anshu, Dr. Jessica, we were constantly in touch in the WhatsApp. Uh, Dr. Jessica Hello. used to send a picture to ask the doubt. Yes. I used to ask her. That is how we you know, like we learned because we okay. may be missing things. So when we support each other, it is the best culture, sir. Yes, excellent. Yes. So we need to know some uh, the characteristics for quality profession. What are things we need to do? The role and responsibility is correct. So there is one more thing I want to share. What is an average percentage of pass from our institute? 84 percentage over a period of four years. But, you know, the contributing factor for this success, this is not because of Rishi or because of Tenerife. No, this is because of teamwork. The, the reason for this success is teamwork. Without support from your side, how can we succeed this? So if there is teamwork, if there is, if there is good things from our heart, if there is dedication, definitely we can, we can do different things in our life, correct? So this is the secret. So no need to search anything in Google. So first we need to build a culture, positive things, supporting others. Okay, any, any questions, please? Any question from Dr. Vimita ma'am as well as from Dr. Anshim ma'am? What about our current professionals, please? Yes, Santosh, sir. Any, any, any yeah. doubts, please? Yeah, I, sir, actually, uh, today evening was very, uh, I know, very motivated and very boosted for the uh, for preparation of the CPHU exam. First of all, I thank for you for having this webinar, sir, and all our alumni of the C. Thank you, sir. For giving yes. their, uh, you know, their uh, struggles and what was there during their preparations. Yes. Sharing sharing with our people it's it's very very motivated and it should up our uh, confident i have one one question sir yes sir please yeah actually uh out of we told there is 140 questions so yeah. it will be divided uh in into four uh, uh you know four categories. by four different chapters yes yes yeah, yes different chapters so those yeah. questions uh, for example for uh, performance implement the 40 questions. It, those questions will come in each category. I mean, the no, 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 it will come so together. It will be sir. scattered. It will be scattered. Yeah, yeah it's more, it's scattered. Yeah, they will oh, mix okay. together. They will not give by different chapter. No, oh, just no, no, one, no. one, 140 questions, set of questions. That's all. They will not give by different chapters. By different chapters. Yeah, this is like other exam. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, one question will be there in the and the next question will be there in the other chapter. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mixed, mixed things, sir. What about uh, Jisha, ma'am? Jisha from Qatar. So, what is what is going on in your mind now? Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, I have given to be I am self motivated with this, sir. Actually, okay. I had a lot of hustles to go through these two months, which was an yes. extra work, but uh, actually, I did not join so to if, the, if, uh, if you, if to you compare your certificate. If you compare your practice as well as our uh, professional's uh, lesson, there is a significant gap, correct? Yes, sir. So there are a lot uh, of things initially you need to I used to, to close the uh, Initially, I was like uh, keeping up track with the uh, lessons and assignments. But in between, due to some uh, like my work related issue, uh, yeah. I had uh, more commitment on that, uh, which was an extra job. So I could not uh, pay 100% attention to this. But uh, with this, I'm really self motivated. I'll do my best. And even be, I will also be a testimony for like this. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, uh, Tamil Arasi from Saudi, Saudi Arabia. 
I think she evening, sir. Many, many, yes, good evening, ma'am. Uh, thanks for the information. Actually, it's really interesting and informative. Uh, I, I have a few query. Like, um, I don't know whether it is really fair enough to ask now. Mm -hmm. Do we have yeah. any negative marks for the wrong wrong answer, sir? No, 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 no. There is no negative. Okay. Only fifteen questions they will exclude randomly out of one forty, and they will give score for only one twenty five questions. That's all. There is no um, negative. But we don't know exactly what are the fifteen questions they are going to be. No, 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 no. Sim simply, I mean, randomly they will remove from one forty. We don't know exactly which ones they will remove. Okay. Okay. Randomly, randomly they will remove. Okay. Uh, sir, is there any fa uh, facility to have your session in the offline, sir? Not now. There is a future. Uh, okay. 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 We'll see. We'll see in future. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, what is the final message from this webinar? Hard work never fails. Without doing, uh, without dedication, without hard work, how can we expect good things in our life? Correct. So, first, if you need the good things in your life, work hard, support others, try to build positive things, positive culture. So, that is the only thing. We need to focus on our process now. So even after CPH, you please try to learn continuously and do some research because there are a lot of opportunities for research. After CPHQ, if you do more research, if you publish many papers, especially in quality and patient safety, we can able to get many things from different country. This is the secret. Please try to focus on research. There are a lot of opportunities for research, especially in quality and patient safety, because almost 99.99 percentage of quality professionals not aware about the importance of research. At least we can do. We can provide some recommendations to our colleagues, even to our community. Especially for cost reduction, we can do many things. We can do many research. What are things we can do to reduce expenditure in our organization? Why we need to focus on only certificate, accreditation, accreditation, accreditation? Please change your practice. So don't focus on certificate. Try to use these techniques in your regular practice. Convert your practice into research and share it to others, please. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jessica, ma'am, and Dr. Pimita, and Dr. Anshu, ma'am. Thanks a lot for your continuous support. We'll do more collaborations in future. We'll do more research also. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank so, you all. We'll thank you all. We'll do more webinar like this. Okay. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir.